When you got a Python class and you want to use a method of that class without creating an object first, you need a static method. And with the help of Python decorators, you can actually declare static methods. However, there are two ways to do that. There is the static method decorator and there is the class method decorator. But what is the difference? In this video, I'm going to tell you exactly that. And as always, you can find a written article on this topic on my website, which is linked down below in the description. Python functions are first class objects. That means a function can be assigned to a variable, a function can be passed as an argument to another function, and a function can be defined inside another function. To exemplify the first class nature of Python functions, I prepared a little example. Over here, we have the function operator with the three parameters operation x and y. While x and y can be numerical data types such as int or float, operation has to be a function. Because inside of operator, we call operation and then pass x and y to operation. And then return the result of operation from operator. Then we have two other functions, add and sub. Add adds x and y together while sub subtracts y from x and then returns the result. In our main part here, we then call operator with add and sub and pass two numerical values to those. And if you don't know why I use this if name equals main, check out this video over here. If we run that code, we can see first we have operator add 23, 42, and that adds 23 and 42 together, which results in 65. When we pass sub to operator, we get minus 19 because 23 minus 42 is minus 19. And this is the case because inside of operator, operation is called, and then it calls one of those functions, the functions we have passed here. Another example for the first class nature of Python functions is the embedding of functions inside other functions. Here we have the successor function, which gets a function as a argument. And inside the successor function, we have a wrapper function that has an arbitrary amount of arguments. And then the function we have passed to successor is called inside wrapper with the arguments passed to wrapper. And then the result of function is returned with plus one. And then the successor function returns the wrapper function, which wraps around the function we have passed to successor. So to make it a little bit more clear, I have prepared an example down here. We declared another function add, which adds x and y together. And now we can pass add to the successor function and then create a new function add plus one. That means we add two numbers together, x and y, and then add is called inside the wrapper function, which was returned by the successor function and adds one. So we are creating a function on the fly while the program runs, which is add plus one. So if we run that, we can see 40, 23 plus 42 is 65, as we remember from our last example, but now it's 66 because plus one was added. And this embedding of a function in another function and then returning the embedded function with another function in it is another example for the first class nature of Python functions. To enhance our Python function with another function, we don't have to construct them on the fly by passing a function to a function. We can actually use Python's syntactical sugar, the decorators, to do so. So over here, we have a little example. We still have our successor function from the embed example, which has a wrapper inside it, and the wrapper calls the function we have passed the successor and then adds one to it. However, this time we are not passing add to the successor function, we're using a decorator. We're decorating our add function directly with the successor function by adding an add suck on top of our function definition. And then we just call the add function 23 plus 42 and see what happens. And we can see the result is again 66 because our add function is now decorated with the successor function, which adds plus one to the result of add. 
and when we add 23 and 42 together we get 65 and if we add 1 we get 66. With the knowledge of Python decorators we can now start to declare a static method in a Python class. For that I prepared this class accumulator which has one member variable ACC that is initialized to zero. Then we have a function of that class which is add and every time we call add the ACC is increased by the value of x. Then we use the static method decorator for the sub function and the sub function does not change the value of ACC, it just subtracts y from x. And when we look at our main part, I first declare a object of accumulator, then I add 23 and 42 to the accumulator, then we print out the accumulator and then we use accumulator.sub2342 and here we are not using the object a I created, we are using the class accumulator itself and call sub on it. So if we run that code we can see that first our accumulator is 65 because we added first 23 and then 42 to it and then we use the static method sub 23 42 which is minus 19. By declaring sub as a static method we cannot access any properties of that class or of an object of that class because we don't have self and we don't have access to any class properties and that is how a static method works. A static method doesn't know anything about the class itself or its object. By using the static method decorator on the sub method of our class accumulator we declare the sub method as a static method and static methods in Python don't have access to the, to the class attributes or class methods. It is essentially a function enclosed in a class and if we want to call it we have to state the class name first and then use a dot to use that function. And I actually prepared several Python cheat sheets for you if you have trouble remembering everything I say in my videos. And you can pick up those cheat sheets as a high resolution PNG in my Gumroad shop or if you want to print out those cheat sheets you can even get a printable PDF for a small amount of money in my Gumroad shop or as a tier 1 or higher Patreon subscriber. So check out the links down below in the description to pick up your Python cheat sheets. Now that we know about the static method decorator we have to talk about its counterpart the class method decorator. For that I again use the accumulator class and this time we declare a class method increase count and get count. The accumulator class was now extended with a count attribute which is a class attribute. So when we create an object from accumulator count is not part of the object, count is still part of the class. And this count shall count how often we have created an object from the accumulator class. So if we call the init method of the accumulator class accumulator increase count is called which then increases count and we declared increase count as a class method and we have a special parameter we are passing to increase count and this is CLS and stands for the class itself. So if we declare a class method we have to pass the class itself as CLS or any other variable name you would like to use and then access that class with a dot and then we can access its attributes. In contrast to the static method where we didn't pass CLS, the class method can access the class attributes and class methods. So if we run that code we can see that we first create an object A of accumulator and when we then get the count which is itself a class method because it accesses the count of accumulator we get one because we created one object of accumulator. If we call it a second time and then get count we get two because we have now two accumulator objects of the class accumulator. So a class method can access the class attributes of a Python class in stark contrast to a static method that cannot 
access any of the class attributes. And that is the difference between a static and a class method in Python. Let's sum everything up. Python functions are first class objects. With decorators, we can enhance the functionality of a Python function. And with the decorators at static method, we can declare a static method inside a class that doesn't have any access to the class attributes. With the add class method decorator, we can declare a method that can access the class attributes and can manipulate those class attributes. And if you watched until the end, please let me know down below in the comments by commenting with this computer emoji. And if you enjoyed watching this video, check out this video over here where I tell you how energy efficient Python actually is.